Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on all kinds of things related to narcissism, narcissistic relationships, and the harm that these relationships can bring you. Um, we're back to the Proverbs. And you know I love me some Proverbs. And all of you who are sending them in from all over the world, it's been just such a pleasure to just research them and where they come from. I think this series may just end up going on forever. Today's proverb is going to be one that I'm sure many of you heard. It is, get out while the getting is good. So let's talk about this proverb and how it relates to narcissism and narcissistic abuse. I'm sure you can already guess. In a narcissistic relationship, getting out while the getting's good is probably after the first date. But let's break down what this proverb actually means. It means to get out of a situation while you can still do so easily and with minimal damage, loss, or harm. When I tried to source the origin of this particular proverb, it was difficult, and I was able to locate two sources from the early part of the 20th century. One, interestingly, had to do with sales, I think like car sales, and the other one was from a book about women pioneers in Kansas by a woman named Sarah Comstock. But in general terms, this saying, get out while the getting's good, is about leaving a situation while it's still a good idea. Now, perhaps in a narcissistic relationship, it really is about the idea of getting out while the getting is good is really about not getting in in the first place. But this proverb actually can be quite useful as a strategy for narcissistic relationships. In an intimate relationship, let's face it, the love bombing feels good. That kind of attention and all of that is fun, but we know now it's very dangerous. I often tell people, if you can figure out how to date someone who's narcissistic and love bomby for just six weeks and get and then get out, it's sort of like eating the top of a cupcake only. Top's the best part, and then you get out before you waste the calories on the stump. But most people who are in thrall over the whole love bombing phase are often not fully aware of what's happening to them. And so they aren't realizing that this love bombing is not is, is time limited and so they don't realize that if they stick it out not so good the key and what this saying really gets at the core of is to pay attention to the red flags and not justify them it's interesting i recently talked with someone who was telling me that about five months into a relationship with someone who turned out to be quite narcissistic five months into the relationship her new partner said something really mean just mean to her she was shocked by how mean and toxic it was because until then the relationship was going really well and she was really enjoying the relationship. There was no way to justify what this person said. It was just so mean, but she did justify it. She said he's a hard hitting businessman and he's really good at business and she had brought him a business related question. So she thought mm, that's just he, that he's a hard hitting businessman. That's just him being his business self. And all that meant to me was that both his business self and his personal self were cruel and invalidating. At that point, when he made that comment, that was when the getting was getting out was good, right? Because she had invested, had not invested too much of herself into it, and neither had he. Well, she stuck it out. And many years later, when she finally did try to get out, when it wasn't such good getting out, she pinned that moment when he said that mean thing as the moment when the relationship really started slowly going south. And years later, there was a kids and house and the stuff. And at that point, she was mired in a custody battle, divorce, money nightmare. The getting, was, getting out was no longer so good. The tricky bit is honoring those red flags early, is that if you are that savvy to see the red flags and start getting out, the narcissist becomes like a dog with a bone with you. When it's still early in the relationship and it's still a game to win for them to win you, if you take on an early fl red flag and you step away, they aren't going to let that happen. They're going to do things like future fake, be really seductive, tell you what you want to hear, and you need to be made of steel to not fall for what they're saying and believe the false promises and the show personship and all of that. So I know some of you are saying, I saw the red flags. But then, after the red flags, they became so convincing in terms of their promises and behavior. Remember that the narcissistic person needs and wants to win. And if you are just in love bombing and haven't gotten to devalue, and you see a red flag and you get out right before devalue, they're really, really, really going to try to win you over and capture you 
before you can leave them. The other challenge is that after the relationship has gone on for a while, maybe for years, and you try to get out, they don't like that either. As I said before, abandonment is a major trigger for narcissistic people. So if you abandon them, they will react strongly and it is very uncomfortable for them. Abandonment can mean facing down narcissistic rage and escalation and just general awfulness. So once you are in one of these relationships for too long, the getting is no longer good because the narcissistic person may make it so psychologically difficult to leave. You will face down significant manipulation, gaslighting, flying monkeys. Being prepared for all of this helps, but it's still never easy. Now in families, I'm not sure what the getting looks like because in families, it's usually too late. You were born into it. So is there really ever a time when the getting is good? Probably not because you weren't going to leave when you were four. So one way is to take advantage when it comes to familial separation, if you could have taken advantage of a natural transition point. Again, I remember talking to one woman who actually joined the military to get away from her narcissistic mother. She knew that if she enlisted, she'd have no control over where she would be deployed. She did multiple tours of duty, both in the United States and overseas. And she still said that the rigors of a military life were more manageable than her mother. It allowed her then to be moved around. And then finally, she made her life in the state that held the final base she was stationed at before her term of service was finished. And that gave her a permanent natural distance from her mother. But she knew she wouldn't just be able to move away on her own without the excuse of the military. Others will use college as a time to get away or accept a job transfer. However, you can wait for the manipulations and guilt from your family and for many people from narcissistic family systems. It is difficult to fight back on the attempts to draw them back into the family systems over guilt or some other manipulation. In jobs, getting out while the getting is good is getting out before you get too stuck in things like golden handcuffs related to pensions and retirement plans or get too over focused on maybe making partner in a business or law firm or tenure that you get stuck in a toxic place. Pay attention to the toxic patterns and recognize that you won't change them in an institutional setting. Some people will white knuckle it in a company, for example, until they become vested or a public offering is made so they can make money and they will report that they actually needed all that money to pay for the damn therapy bills after enduring all the abuse for staying in the company. People sometimes feel like they're giving up too easy or being a quitter if they quit a toxic employment situation, when in fact, they may be saving themselves years that would have been lost in a career that was thwarted by a toxic situation. Getting out while the getting is good is just good life wisdom around money, time, leaving a party, and just knowing when to quit. When it comes to toxic or narcissistic relationships, the earlier, the better. I do notice that in survivors of narcissistic abuse, they get better at this over time. And the amount of time they stick around with each new narcissist gets shorter and shorter. To me, that's progress. They may then leave a narcissistic friendship after a year. Great. And let's face it, thanks for watching this video to the end because you could have left early and thought you were getting out while the getting was good. And maybe that's just my neurosis that I thought you may not like it. And that's a topic for a different video, but getting out while the getting is good could have saved many, many people in narcissistic relationships, a world of hurt. Our whole culture around feeling like we have to stick it out or it's going to get better or the terrible hope that keep these, that keeps these relationships afloat. Listen to that old proverb. It doesn't just have to do with money. Thanks again for tuning in. And just an FYI, a lot of the themes covered in these videos go into much, much deeper dives in our monthly seminar series. These are much more long and elaborate. And for more information on those, you can go to my website and then we'll often have, the, we'll have that link in the description of this video. So you can go get more information on that too. Thanks again.